Welcome, 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 welcome to another episode of 3D Boxing Podcast. It's good to be back. It's been a little while. I was out of town in San Antonio talking to a bunch of fighters, uh, but it's good to be back. Um, what a mediocre weekend of boxing it was. A um, bunch of fights on two cards, the ESPN Plus card, the top ranked card, uh, and then the uh, Showtime PPC card. Um, not a whole lot to write home about. I mean, uh, well, Enos looked really good, but besides that, um, I mean, really boring boxing. I mean, look, the sniper did what he did. Pedraza did what he did. Um, th- that's it. Uh, Erickson Lubin boxed well, except for when he got clipped. Um, but I mean, nothing really to write home about, except for Enos. Enos looks spectacular. Um, but this week coming up, big time boxing finally returns. And yes, I know we've had, you know, uh, Great fighters like Shakur Stevenson. Um, we've had world title fights like like Franco. Uh, we've had uh, Josh Franco and Maloney. Um, we've had world title fights like Jamel Herring. Uh, I, I get it. But there's been no, at least in America, right? I mean, maybe if, if you're in the UK, the Dillian White fight really moved the needle for you. But here in the US, there really hasn't been anything at all to write home about until now, until this weekend. We got the Charlo Brothers pay-per-view. Um, double header, and, and this is going to be a great card. Um, I'm hoping this sells well. That's what we're going to spend today's episode on. How big of a star is our Jamel and Jamal Charlo? Um, they've been pro for a while now. Um, they turned pro back in 2012 and 2013. So we have a history with them now. Right, we we know how good they are, um, but coming up, you had these two identical brother, identical twin brothers, uh, with all world power, skills, um, you know the look, the personality, the get the gab. These two guys, you could tell from day one that they had star potential written all over them. It it's been seven eight years now since they turned pro. Oh, well, I mean, since they've exploded on our scene, um, they turned pro before that. I think they turned pro uh, in 2008, I believe, Jamel Charlo turned pro. Uh, but we've been seeing him regularly since 2012 and 2013. Um, I think Jamel, turned, Jamel, little brother, turned pro first. And then in 2009, um, Jamal turned pro. So, I mean, we have a decade of them at the pro ranks. Jamel, um, over a decade. But, I mean, it's really been since 2012, 2013, where they were regulars on our TV. Um, and we're going to see how, how, how well PBC, how well Al Heyman has done uh, to turn them into superstars. Um, this is big for boxing. This is big for the Charlo brothers. This is big for boxing. Um, look, the UFC pay-per-views have done really well, surprisingly well, better than expected. This is going to be on Saturday night, So it, there, and there's not as much college football, right? Um, there's there won't be an NBA playoff game. I don't believe it, that, that that depends on 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 who's still around. But I don't think there'll be an NBA playoff game on Saturday. Um, you know, baseball will be headed towards an end. I think that's the next last day of baseball, but no one really watches that anyway. And, and that's what I want to get into, right? So the other sports are. I mean, they're being protested. I mean. Whatever you want to say about that, that the ratings are down drastically for baseball, basketball, football, the big three. The ratings are down because people don't, or whatever, the whole social justice movement, the, you know, everything has kind of, it, it's it's created a wedge. So whatever you want to think about that, ratings are down as a result of it. Um, that doesn't exist in boxing, right? There, there's no real movement like that that we've seen in boxing. So, all of those fans who aren't watching the big American three, baseball, basketball, football, are going to need something to watch. 
Do they buy this? It's a full day of boxing. It's a double header. Um, it's a double. There's six cards, uh, six fights. Um, it's a great, it's a great night for Texas. We have Brandon Figueroa fight. Um, in the undercard, then we'll have <clears throat> Jamal and Jamal. So it's a great night. Really good. I mean, it is for the hardcore. This is as good as it gets. I mean, these cards, both of them are all action, fun fight. Uh, both the main events. We don't know who's going to win. You know, I'm picking both Charlos to win, but we don't know that. Sir, Sergey Derevchenko is a live opponent. Jason Rosario just destroyed Julian J. Rock Williams. So those guys could win. It's not out of the question that they could win. A lot of y'all are going to pick them. You know, leave your thoughts and comments. Leave your predictions uh, below. Who do you think is going to win these fights? I- I'm picking both Charlo brothers. Uh, I- I'm taking Jamal on points, and I'm taking Jamel, little Jamel, by knockout. Um, in addition to that, we have Danny Roman fighting against uh, Piano. Great fight. We have Brandon Figueroa fighting. Brandon Figueroa is one of he's one of my favorite fighters to watch. Not just because he's a Texan, because he's all out, all offense. He throws a million punches. Uh, he's, he's, he's a heck of a fun fight. Now he's taking a little bit of a tune-up fight, uh, but his WBA uh, 118 pound title is on the line. I'm sorry, 122 pound title is on the line. Uh, we also got Lewis Neary versus. Alan Alameda, Aaron Alameda, which is uh, two undefeated fighters, and that's going to be really good. No super band weight fight, and hopefully we get Figueroa versus Neary after that. Um, that's for the vacant World Boxing uh, WBC super band weight title. Uh, we have John Rael Casimiro versus Duke Micah. I'm going to pick the upset. What I'm saying is this is a great card. The card is really, really good. There's six fights, all of them are high octane, high energy, fan friendly fights that the boxing enthusiast the hardcore is all in for but can the charlo sell it to the casual right we and, and this is going to be indicative i say more on how well has pbc done um i'm going to say the over under of 250 for a full day of boxing two pay-per-views basically for 75 dollars um do you guys like that i mean you guys will go under or over on 250,000 pay-per-views i'm going to say this hits 250,000 is that aggressive? Is that high? Is that low? I don't know. It's seventy-five dollars for a full day of boxing. It's basically two cards. I think it's a good deal. You know, you're gonna you have people still itching for big time boxing. There has not been any big time boxing. Any mark your calendar, circle the date, must see TV. There's been good fights. You know, we've had big prospects fight with Bam Rodriguez, uh, Boots Enos fought the other day. You know, there, there's been lots of good prospects who've captured our attention, but. You know, there hasn't been big mega fights, and that's what we have here. Charlo versus Derevchenko, Jamal Charlo versus Derevchenko has fight of the year written all over it. And so does Jamal Charlo versus Jason Rosario. Um, and I think Rosario, I'm going to say Jamal Charlo outboxes him and then finishes him late in a slugfest. You know, I, I think Rosario is going to have a lot of moments, but I, I think the experience – and uh, just being the better boxer is going to carry the day. You know, Jamal is – and Jamal are both – Really good boxer punchers. I don't know how good of a boxer puncher Rosario is. I know he's a puncher, but I think uh, Charles is going to land more shots and break him down. I say he stops him in the ninth round. And I think Jamal wins a fun fight, which he wins on his boxing skill. And I, I think Jamal Charlo wins a unanimous decision against Derevchenko. So I got Jamal by UD, and I got Jamal um, by ninth round TKO. That, that, those are my predictions. And I'm, I'm going to say it does about 250,000 pay per view buys. Is that good to you guys? If this does 250, is that good? Is that good for boxing? You know, again, boxing has a has a moment here to have all eyes on it. All eyes on boxing right now. It's going to have this again in a few weeks. I'm going to do this, a similar episode when we get to TFEMO and, and Loma. And that's on ESPN. So that's free. That has to do a big number. This has to do a good pay-per-view buy rate. And, and 250 is generally 250 or above is generally considered good. That's where the promoters break even. I'd like to see this do more, but this is going to show us it, it could. Maybe it does way more than I'm expecting it to. Um, this is going to show us has PBC done their job in promoting these two guys? Right? You can see they're both on my wall, right? Uh, because they have star making ability, they have star making skills. And you can check out the article. There's an article up on 3dboxingblog.com. Uh, where we say, where we discuss that topic. Make sure to check that out. Uh, but 
I, I want you, you guys to answer that. And, and I, I think we're going to get a definitive answer. Some people say yes. Some people say no. Jamal and Jamal have been headlining cards. They're both multi divisional. Uh, they're both multi time world champions, right? Jamal in two different Jamal in two different weight classes, and Jamal a two time hundred fifty four pound champ. So I mean, you you can make this argument either way. If PBC has done a good job or not on making these two guys, which had star written all over them, actual stars, or are they only stars to the boxing hardcore? This is gonna. This is what we know is there's a threshold of pay per view buys for somebody who's a hardcore darling, but not a pay per view star, right? Like if you look at Ward versus Kovalev, if you look at Crawford versus Khan, Crawford versus Postal, they never go, uh, Triple G fights, Triple G versus Lemieux, Triple G vote versus um, Jacobs. None of those guys are. Crossover stars. None of them are stars to your average sports fan. And they don't go above 150, 160, 170. Like that's the threshold. I think this gets over it. And I think that's good for boxing because you're going to have some casual eyes. On, and you're not going to have casual eyes on like a Mayweather fight or a Pacquiao fight or a Canelo fight. But you're going to have some casual eyes on it. And they're going to get two tremendous cards of boxing. They're going to have great boxing all day. And they can keep the college football. Or they can keep the baseball. Off. I don't think there's NBA players on it. They keep that all off and just focus on the boxing. They're going to get their money's worth. Because look, 70, 75, $69.99, $74.99 is kind of the new go rate for pay-per-views. This is what we have. You're getting two cards and you're getting six really. There's not a bad fight on this card. There's not, not only is it not a bad fight, every fight is going to be high action, high energy. So you're going to get your money. And, and is $75 your money? It, 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 can you get $75 worth? I mean, that's a different question, right? Are, are pay per views overpriced? Of, of, of course they are, right? They, they're way too expensive. But like, that's the going rate. Now, for $75, is this a, an entertaining good night of boxing compared to other $75 pay-per-view events? Of course it is. Um, so I, I'm telling everyone, have a fight party. Invite your friends. If you have friends who watch some boxing, a little boxing, get them to watch this card because this is going to be a great night of boxing. It really is. It's all day. You know, think about like when you watch the NBA playoffs like in the bubble, right? When there were four games that's on all day. Or you watch the NCAA basketball tournament, right? With basketball, the first couple of rounds on all day. We're going to have that here. We're going to have that in high-level entertaining fights. Like we had high-level fights this past weekend with Pedraza and um, Lubin, um, F.A., right? But none of that was entertaining to a non-boxing purist. Even to a boxing peers, that was hard to take. Um, but that's not going to be the case this weekend. They, uh, PBC, uh, TGB Promotions, TB, um, they, they've done a great job putting this together. This is a great card. The matchmaking is great. The entertainment value is great. But it needs to, be, it needs to get in front of the casual boxing fan. And I'm just hoping that I don't know if it does or it doesn't. I'm hoping that it does. You know, if it does 250, that tells me that it did. Uh, and I think 250 is a reasonable number. I'm hoping it does a billion. But that's not really that's not reasonable. I want you know, I want everyone in the boxing community, uh, boxing casual, boxing hardcore, like to to to, to if you can. And I know 75 dollars is a lot, but get this card. Um, you know, get this card. It's well worth. I know we're in the pandemic. I know money is tight for a lot of people. Get this card. This is such a good card. Um, but let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Uh, were you as hyped for the return of big time boxing? Do you are you like me on a big time boxing in America? Um, if not, what fight do you consider that? Uh, leave your thoughts, comments below. Leave your predictions below. And also leave your prediction for pay per view buys. Um, from Texas. Oh, find me on all forms of social media. Three D boxing, three D boxing blog. I'm going to link the article to three D boxing. Uh, blog article on this very topic um, in the description below. Make sure to check that out. Um, remember to like and subscribe on all form and, and share on all forms of social media. From Texas to the world, thank you and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.